In this video, we're going to talk about redirect examinations of a witness at trial. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to Legal Bites. If you're new here, my name is Alita. I'm a lawyer licensed in California and DC. And on this channel, we explain the law one bite at a time. So if you're watching this video, you may have already seen a video that I have put out on uh, direct examinations and cross examinations. So by this point, you might understand that a witness first goes through a direct examination by the attorney that has called that witness to the stand. And then they go for a cross examination by the opposing party or the opposing party's attorney. And uh, then after that, they have an opportunity to possibly go on redirect. Now, the first thing to know about redirect is it is entirely optional. A witness that goes through a direct examination and a cross-examination does not necessarily need to go through a redirect. And that is because a redirect is all about rehabilitating the witness after the cross-examination. Now, the second thing to note about a redirect is that it has to be within the scope of the questions that were asked on cross-examination. So because of that, the witness can't just simply retestify to everything that they said on direct examination. Basically, it's going to be a much narrower scope of questions. And realistically, the attorney that is doing a redirect, generally speaking, wants to keep it as short as possible if they even do one in the first place. And that leads to another point about direct examinations is that because they are optional, sometimes one of the strongest things to signal to the jury about about a witness is to not even have a redirect at all. This signals to the jury that there's nothing to clean up after cross-examination, there's really nothing damaging that came out in the cross-examination, and that the witness's credibility is ultimately completely intact. But it is often the case that something has come up in the cross-examination that needs to be tidied up a little bit here and there, and so uh, the redirect will be brought up by the attorney that did the direct examination, and ultimately the point is to keep it as short and to the point as possible. And that's because the other signaling aspect is the longer you have a redirect after a cross-examination, the more you signal to the jury that problematic things have come out across examination. Now, there are two kind of concepts to note that kind of come out of all of the things that I just said. Number one is this idea that if the witness is not broken, don't fix them. Like I said, a redirect is not necessary for a witness. So that can be one of the biggest uh, signals of strength to the jury about this witness is just to say, nope, no redirect is necessary. Now, the second concept is that sometimes if a witness is too broken, it's best not to try to fix them. And that's because sometimes a witness will simply have come out with testimony that is just so damaging that in order to try to clean it up, you'll end up fumbling around, taking too long, and it'll ultimately be unsuccessful and make your overall case look much weaker if you are trying desperately to clean up a witness that is just not going to come out of it looking okay. This in turn can connote an overall lack of confidence in the entire case itself possibly, depending on the witness and depending on how bad all of that looks and depending on how much effort the attorney tries to put into a, uh, a, a redirect of a really bad witness. So in that kind of a case, it might be better to just ask a couple of questions or no questions possibly uh, to basically say, okay, yeah, this witness kind of sucked for our case, but ultimately that doesn't really harm us. We're going to dust ourselves off and move on and we'll get to the next witness that's actually going to be very helpful. Now, like I said, a redirect is ultimately rehabilitating a witness after the cross-examination. Usually that kind of uh, rehabilitation is going to be addressing some kind of maybe bias that has come up that wasn't previously explained or some kind of an impeachment that happened on the stand where the witness has been shown on cross-examination to have made some kind of a statement on the stand in front of the jury that was inconsistent with some prior statement that they made before. Ultimately, an impeachment is just aimed to make the witness look somehow either dishonest or inaccurate uh, to be a bit more charitable. So ultimately, the best way to do a rehabilitation of a witness after something like that when they're, they're conducting the redirect is to show some kind of a logical explanation as simply as possible that shows the difference between what came out on direct and what came out on cross-examination. Oftentimes on cross-examination, a witness who is 
understanding that what they are kind of being forced to testify to on cross-examination is damaging to their case will very often be sort of chomping at the bit to try to explain their answers instead of just giving a yes or no answer. And if they are up against an attorney who is very good at maintaining control on cross-examination, they won't really have that opportunity. So on rehabilitation, in the redirect, it is usually the best thing to ask the witness why. As an example, in the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial with Ben King, actually, I don't think he ultimately was redirected a good sign of confidence. But if he were, a question could have come up about the photos that he didn't provide to either side showing one of the bottles in the bar in the Australia incident. A question could have been asked, why were these photos not provided? And he could have answered, no one asked me for them. Pretty logical, pretty reasonable explanation. As an alternative example, if Alejandro Romero had been brought into the court to testify, undoubtedly he probably would have been asked on cross-examination about the hair and the dress that Amber Heard was wearing on May 22, 2016, when Mr. Romero was supposed to have seen her and supposed to have seen some injuries. And uh, what we understand from his video deposition was the fact that he said that he didn't actually notice any of that, didn't remember any of that, but he remembered not seeing any injuries on her face. So if he were put on cross-examination and then those questions were asked about her hair and her, her clothes, then on redirect, uh, he could have been asked, well, why is it that you uh, reasonably believe that you, that that she didn't have any injuries on her face on that day. Then he would have responded something to the effect of, you know, in every day of my working life, when I talk to people, I make eye contact with people. And so I understand that I don't pay attention to any of that other stuff, but I make sure that I make eye contact with people so that I see them and they see me and they see that I see them and I'm connecting with them. And so therefore I would have understood if somebody had a black eye, I would have noticed it, I would have brought it up. That would have been a perfectly logical explanation, which of course already came out in the video deposition, but just using this as an example, if he had been brought into court in person. Anyhow, that's the redirect examination. What do you think? Were there any redirects that you have seen at some point that were particularly powerful in your opinion? Let us know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you haven't already seen the other videos on a direct examination or on cross-examination, be sure to check them out. They'll be linked either on this video screen right here or down in the description below. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video or at least found it informative. And if you did, I would love it if you could hit the like button. It does help us with the YouTube algorithm gods. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can find out when the next video is uploaded. See you in the next video.